summer series, A String of Pearls, Dutch Buzz contributors speak to people who have made an exceptional contribution to our local community. People whose passion for what they do have had an added value for the city of The Hague. Well-known The Hague sports photographer, writer, campaigner and fundraiser Hans Willink recently spent 50 days sitting outside the Musee in Scheveningen to save this unique museum from closure. He spoke to passers-by and politicians and gave the media a number of interviews to convince the authorities that this reflection of life in Scheveningen had to be preserved. Hans is also a champion of disabled sportsmen and women and makes sure they share the platform when it comes to sporting awards in The Hague. I recently spoke to Hans at Musee to talk about the many campaigns he's headed. They were uh, threatened with closing because the municipality uh, didn't want to give them any money anymore. And uh, although I'm normally involved in sports and everything that has to do with sports and disabled people, I got so angry that I said, OK, I'm going to do a, a protest action every day, 11 o'clock. I'll be up front with a sign that Musée is from all of us and not just from some commission who thinks that it's not needed anymore. And I did that for 50 days, and after day 47, the older man said, OK, I have found some more money, and Musée and Stet, who was also threatened, uh, got to have some money, and it had to be saved. How did the public respond to your one-man protest? Yeah, incredible. It's, it's very, very nice. From the very first day, uh, people came by and um, talked with me about what I was doing and why, and how they could uh, contribute to the action. And I said, well, uh, there's a site and you can put your autograph there and we need as much autographs as we can, but we're aiming for 10,000. We didn't get that, but we came close, I think uh, 9,300 something. Was that enough to convince the authorities? Yeah, and, and um, what happened is that the, the second day already uh, Den Haag FM came uh, to, to uh, shoot some TV and uh, a political party came on the same day, it was coincidental, uh, hard for Den Haag. So politics got involved, media got involved, and media got bigger involved. We um, got national uh, coverage from the Telegraaf, and then not the Haaglander section, but the national section. And WNL television came for uh, uh, their television program in the morning. And they did an, uh, an item on it. So I, I said to the, to the managing director here at Musee, if they find some money and they ask themselves where are we going to spend it, I'm sure they're going to spend it here first because we are the pain in the ass. <laughs> because if, if we would have... Uh, clo- I, I say we now, eh? <laughs> but if we would have been closed down permanently, that big media would have come back again and then it would have been something different so lucky and with with the the national media there came more politics uh, involved in the Hague and they talked to the older man I'm I'm absolutely sure and said come on find the money somewhere this is not the first of your campaigns is it yes I I I thought it was uh, strange that we have a, a fantastic uh, gala gala every year in the circus theater uh, and then they uh, hand out the prize for the best sportsman woman uh, coach team and talent but nothing for the disabled and a few years ago I was still uh, doing columns for Den Haag Centraal the weekly newspaper and I wrote a column about it and I was invited to talk about it at uh, City Hall and they said, um, well, we, uh, we don't have disabled sportsmen, sport women, who achieve those kinds of, of achievements. At top level. At, to- at, at international top level. And I said, well, I think that if you're disabled and you do sports. It's already an achievement. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, to their standards, I could understand, but I said, you have to do something about it. And one year later, it still wasn't there. And I uh, 
waited for another two weeks and thought about it and then I called two friends and said um, I'm, I'm going to start a foundation we're going to do a prize every year for the best disabled sports men, women, whatever athlete and uh, you don't have to do anything but I need two other members in the board and um, I'm going to get some money from sponsors and we're going to do that every year and so we did and Wouter Dinoselt was the first one who was awarded it and well you can say in in, in, the, in the big international field, he didn't stand out. He, he was always somewhere in the middle, but he did um, two triathlons. He finished two triathlons, full triathlons, with a donor heart. And there are only three people, including him, in the entire world who can say that. Yes, his time is somewhere in the middle. Man, it's an achievement. I think it's absolutely as good as a winner. So the award was named after him? After him, um, because he is he's, um, an outstanding athlete, he's a fantastic human being, and um, we know be- because that's what happens with people with a donor heart, um, he hasn't have a life as long as we all are, can expect to have. So, and we didn't want to wait uh, until he wasn't here anymore. We said, okay, we're gonna name the prize after him, uh, so he gets involved in it, and he, uh, there was a book written about him, what he did and how he did it. And we have uh, 50 copies of that with his signature in it and with something nice for the future winners. As long as he is around, he puts something personal in the book for the winner. And that's very, very nice. Our listeners can't see you, so I need to tell them that you yourself are an invalid and that this is sadly a fairly recent misfortune for you. No, I, I think that's one of the funny sides of life that if you start a foundation like that and then you are a year later uh, one of the members of the group you are working for I didn't expect that, not at all but okay I have to cope with it like all the others I have to see what it's doing for me and not just physically but also mentally and sometimes it's very hard especially in these high risk corona times Hans yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm terrified. I'm absolutely terrified. Um, I'm, if, if I get corona, uh, the doctors promised me I'm not going into the intensive care unit. Um, they uh, promised me a nice, slow death. But I know that, so I'm very, 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 very careful. And I keep my distance to everybody. I don't even kiss my wife and daughters. I keep my distance to them as well, because they go more outside than I do. Yeah. And... Um, I hope that uh, A, they find a cure soon, uh, and if not, that um, it really goes back to the low level we were, uh, because now it's growing again, and yeah, because it's important for the entire world, and not just for uh, disabled people or me or you, but for everybody in the world. We need to win this. Some people say, well, by now I'm really done with Corona. And I heard heard a politician say, yes, but Corona has not done with you yet, so take care. I'm talking to Hans Willink, well-known The Hague journalist and campaigner. Meet the international community in The Hague. Today, Dutch Buzz's The Hague Pill is Hans Willink, well-known The Hague journalist and campaigner. Can I turn to your time as a sports journalist and ask you what some of the highlights were for you, Hans? It's very hard to say because I had so many beautiful things I witnessed as a journalist photographer. I think Ray Barnevelt's win at uh, Lakeside were fantastic to be. But I also was the club photographer for Ader Den Haag, I always say. In that era of my life, I learned how to lose because we lost a lot. But we also won and became championships in the the first division. And that was really, really nice to to be part of. And championships are always good. I loved being here in Scheveningen for a decade being a tournament photographer at the Mets for the tennis tournament, the ATP tennis tournament. 
I was really privileged with my work. I, I had wonderful things to do. I, together with my dear friend, journalist Arnaud Fazel, wrote the biography of Ray Barneveld, which was translated into English as well. Still available at ball.com or me. <laughs> Oh man, I'm, I, I know I'm doing people short by not thinking of them now, but it was a lot. It, was, it really was a lot. I, I can't say that there was one thing. I can't even say that there were ten things that are. It was fantastic. Yeah, and and that's helpful. That's very helpful when you get ill as I did. Um, I have had so far a wonderful, well-filled life. I have been part of and witnessed things other people never witnessed in their life. We've touched on your journalism, but you've also written some fiction and are a published author. Yeah, the Parisian, the Parisian. Not translated in English, yet. <laughs> you never know. Wait until I go attention. <laughs> yeah, you should read it, you should read it. Um, yes, well, that was a funny story as well, because I had ideas for a few short stories and one day out of the blue I just put them all in a pile and started looking if there was a line in it that I could connect them and if there was a book in it and it was I found it and then I started writing of course everything went totally different than what I had in mind at first but it was a very 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 nice experience to do it's wonderful because if you are writing about sports then you have to stay with what actually happens or how you see that it happens. Because if you write fiction, I can decide whether you go to the left or to the right. And if you go to the left, what happens then? Shouldn't it have been better if you went to the right? I can decide. I, I can remember one moment in the writing process that I came down and Monique, my lovely wife, she said, what's with you? because I was very, very sad and she saw that. And I said, well, one of my main characters um, just committed suicide. And she said, you didn't see that coming. I said, no, when I started at the chapter, I didn't know that was going to happen. That's writing. I asked you to bring along your books, a photograph, something off your bedside table and a poem. Of course, I brought my uh, Ray Barneveld book to show you and I give you the promise that I've got 10 copies for your listeners. And um, I, I brought the, the thriller, the Parisian, because that's something that's very close to my heart. I brought a poem from Dune Thomas, Rage Against the Dying of the Light. I think it's wonderful. For my bedside table, I brought a bar of soap. It's Finolia très chic, and we, we had that at home when I was a child, and I loved that smell. And I found it, I think, two years ago, and I didn't know it was still made. And I, I bought the bar, and this is the second bar I bought. The first one I gave to a guy I met in hospital, we were both in hospital, and he remembered having it at home as well. So next time we saw, I gave it to him. You brought along a photograph as well? Where you think I might choose a, a photograph of sports? Well, in a way it is. It's, it's a photograph uh, of the early uh, 1940s from two girls having fun uh, after uh, rowing in a rowing camp. And uh, one of the girls is Anne Frank's sister, not knowing what was going to happen in a few years' time. She was so happy. She had so much fun. And I think that's a very, very important lesson in life. Always live life to the fullest without being in somebody else's way. But get out of it what's in it for you, even if you get ill. Even if you get disabled, don't give a damn, just live life, because it can change in the blink of an eye. Three years ago, I was still quite healthy, 
And now it's getting worse and worse. But I live life to the fullest even now. A valuable message for us all, Hans, and fully applicable in these times. You've selected a passage from your favorite Dylan Thomas poem. Do not go gentle into that good night. Brave men near death who see with blinding sight. Blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on the sad height. Curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Hans Willink, sharing lines from Dylan Thomas with us. Dutch Buzz has supported many of your campaigns through the years and we've got to know you as a man of integrity and commitment for your beloved Scheveningen and The Hague. In our eyes, you're a true The Hague Pearl. It was an absolute pleasure talking to you, Hans. For Dutch Buzz, I'm Lillian Strobach. Dutch Buzz, made by the international community for the international community. Den Haag, den Haag.